Hi, this is Ant. And this is Shira. You're watching hashtag Ant and Shira. And if you want to find out if the man is responsible for being a sole provider in a relationship, then stay tuned. So one of the topics that uh, we wanted to talk about today was a very controversial one. Well, I mean, it's a universal topic. We've been talking about this for since man and woman has been on, <laughs> on the planet. You know, what is a man's role in a relationship? What is a woman's role? Should a man just be a provider? You know, we talk about this a lot because when I'm scrolling social media, when I'm scrolling Facebook or I'm walking in the break room and I'm listening to women talk about their spouse or their dream spouse, all we ever hear as men is that a man is supposed to be a provider. That's it. So the question then becomes, <laughs> are you looking for a husband or are you looking for a father? Which one? What is it that you want in life? Because for me, I find that a lot of women right now, and, and, I, and I don't know if you would agree with me, but I think one of the reasons why there's so many single women out there is because a lot of women only want a guy to take care of them. At least that's what we feel. We feel like that's it. Our whole lives as young boys, we hear we're supposed to grow up and be a provider. We watch our fathers and grandfathers break their neck all their lives, working doubles, working side jobs so he could keep a roof over the head and blah, blah, blah. And all those things, I mean, that's what a man should do. I'm not saying that that's, that's, that's not a responsibility of a man. But is that all we're good for? Because that's what it seems like. You got all these women out here that are gold diggers and they do whatever they can. The real housewives of this and the real housewives of that city and blah, blah, blah. And the real housewives of this athlete and that athlete. And it seems like all they want as a guy is to provide, take care of them. So then us, we as men, we look and say, well, well what the hell are you bringing to the table? <laughs> if I'm paying for everything, I mean, listen, every, every woman on the planet has a vagina. Okay. Um, all right. All right. All right. Let's 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 cut that. Um, yes, we all do. That's mm -hmm. part of what makes us women. That's true. It helps a doctor identify us at birth. Yes. All right. So this is the thing. I I do feel that a man should be a provider. Mm -hmm. I do not think that they need to be the sole provider. Okay. Nor do I think that's the only role as a man. Um, and the reason why I have a problem with that is that if the man is a sole provider, that makes me dependent upon the man mm -hmm. and you know i thought that we moved into the whole independent women you know all yeah. of that type of stuff mm -hmm. and as an independent woman i work side by side with my man you know he contributes i contribute and so i find a problem the sole responsibility is supposed to be the man is providing a man is a provider but that's definitely not the only purpose and I think that it, it shouldn't be just the only role. I don't even think that should be a woman's number one role or, or, or number one desire in a man. Because if you think about it is, if, if she is dependent, then this is just another person that we look at as, hell, I can file you on my taxes with my kids. So all I'm doing is marrying a, 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 an adult that is technically a child. And so that's not what men want. That's not what we're, that's not what okay. we're. Okay, yeah. you say that's not what men want, but that's what a lot of women are seeing. And so just yeah, well, like, mm -hmm. that's what they're seeing. They're seeing women getting with men and the man is taking care of the woman. Right. And they're looking at the woman and she has, you know, the best clothes, the best shoes. She can go out and have fun all the time, well taken care of, and it kind of gives her status. Just like guys, you all have that little thing that gives you all status. Oh, look at me, I got muscles and everything. <laughs> oh, look at me, my beard, you know, my beard game. <laughs> you you beard well. And all of that. <laughs> but women have little things that gives them status and make them elite too. And if you can find a good looking man well, who's successful well. and takes care of you, mm -hmm. then a lot of women feels like, well, because I'm so pretty, because, you know, I don't want to say, but because of all these things that I have going for me, mm -hmm. normally physical things right. or what they're able to bring to the bedroom, etc., yes. that all those things should earn them the providership, so to speak, that the man. But then that, that that then she's no different than what a man could buy out on the street. 
I mean, you can go to any strip club and buy a woman with all these physical attributes and buy a woman with a pretty face that, I mean, I ain't gonna say they're a dime a dozen. I mean, <laughs> <they're>, <laughs> <laughs> there are some there's, some there's a lot of attractive women out there that a guy if he wants to spend his money and it's a lot cheaper it's a hell of a lot cheaper to go to spearmint rhinos in vegas you know and take a stack in what, there what is going on? <laughs> What, what's going on? Uh, well, uh, uh, I've never been there. Say that, say that again, what is going on? But you can go to any strip wow. club. Wow. You can go on any website, <laughs> Craigslist, where, wherever these, where women are advertising themselves, on any of these different sites. Oh, hell, you can go on Facebook. You can go on Facebook. A dude can flash $1,000 and he's going to have a line of chicks, you know, out there wanting him to spend their money on them. It's a lot cheaper to do it that way than it is to marry her okay. and provide. Okay, but can this stripper, you know, be the mother of your child? Are you going to make that the mother of your child? You know, you talked about how, you know, this is just another kid. as a tax write-off, so they feel like, all right, I'm going to jeopardize my body to bring forth this child for you. Jeopardize your body? That's do, what I mean. That's do, what you, do you not she, know what happens to a woman? She's called a womb man. Okay, that's the only reason why. So that we don't have no choice. The, the child has to come to her. So if I wanted to, it's a lot cheaper for me to go buy you gonna buy a mother? I could, no, buy I could buy a child. I could adopt a child. What guy is going around? You can adopt a, a child to and avoid a lot, having a woman. It's a lot cheaper to pay for a kid for 18 years than to be sitting over here trying to take care of a woman for the rest of your life just because that's because she thinks because she's so pretty because oh. she thinks she has these different attributes physical attributes that's all she's bringing to the table I'm just sharing with women I'm sharing with a lot of women that one of the reasons why you're single one of the reasons why is not because guys don't want to marry you they don't want to feel like they're marrying a responsibility I'm, I got, this is another burden. This is another bill. Okay, I got to go and get a house. <laughs> okay, then I got to buy a car. I got to get insurance on the car, insurance on the house. I got to, I got to furnish the house. So now I got this wife. She's just another piece of furniture. A lot of women, that's, the, that's how y'all come off. And I don't think that a lot of men have told y'all. They'll just say y'all hoes. They'll say you a gold digger. They'll say all the derogatory terms. But what they're really saying is, listen, I don't want to feel like I'm committing to another responsibility, financial responsibility, another burden. Okay. So what I, is she should, I, to I agree with you. All yeah. right. It's very hard for me to even play devil's advocate because I'm just not that type of female. Right. You're not. But knowing how some women think most women don't come into the relationship saying oh i need you to provide for everything oh i need you to that's not how they present themselves are you kidding me that's no. how they present themselves no. on social media that's no no, no. social media and social media that's not one-on-one -on -one when they're in a relationship okay. a lot of girls are out there are smart enough to know that if they come on day one into relationship like that it's not going to be a, a date number two they know that they're going to bring the representative to the date just like he is he's going to try to pretend like he all you know mr goody two shoe what, what what your boy the, stevie j say i'm the good guy <laughs> well, so no, stevie j. <laughs> <laughs> they gonna always act like they're the good guy she's going to bring her representative but what i'm saying is there's there's a there's a a a, a, a consciousness that has been embedded in females of every race. It's universal consciousness that says, because I'm a woman, he is supposed to provide for me. And there's a universal consciousness that says to a guy, because you are a guy. I mean, that's what I was taught. One of the first things my father taught me was that a good man, is a, that a, a man is to always be a provider, pay for the bills and all these things. I saw my father go to work. I saw him work his business, I saw him work side jobs, and he was a great provider, I ain't gonna lie. I also saw my mother as an independent woman who contributed to the relationship. She contributed financially, emotionally, psychologically, all those other things that made my father want to lavish her with gifts. You do the same thing. Make me want to lavish you for gifts. I'm just saying that there's a lot of people out there, and you ain't ladies, it ain't a ton of rich men out there. I think you said something important yeah. though. It's based on what you saw. So you're saying that how you saw your father when you were growing up and what he did. and But then on the flip side, you saw your mom and how she made a contribution to the household as well. And because of that, that made your father want to do more for your mom. True. You know, yep. I contribute to our household mm -hmm. and that yep. makes you spoil me oh, like yeah. crazy. But everyone didn't grow up saying that. I know my situation, 
I saw um, for the little bit of time I did when my parents were together, I saw my mom stay home. Mm -hmm. You know, and she didn't stay home like, oh, I'm this kept woman. You know, let me bring the girls over for tea. But she stayed home. She was a housewife and she had a lot of responsibility being a housewife. Mm -hmm. My dad, he went to work. He had all the money. What I did not like is that she didn't have any money. Yeah. What I did not like is that she was dependent upon my dad. And then when they divorced, she didn't have anything. She didn't. She didn't have anything. She didn't have a skill. I never, to this day, I never, ever, ever been in a situation where I saw my mom go to work. I'm not going to say how old I am. I've been <laughs> living for quite a few decades now. And yeah. I never had that luxury of seeing that. But, but go ahead, I'm sorry. it did not make me want to say, oh, I need a man to provide because that's what my mom had. Instead, it made me say, oh, I don't want to be in that situation where I'm dependent upon a man because if he leaves or if it doesn't work out, then what do you have? So you looked at it from the, the negative consequences of your mom not having her own. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of females out there that would have looked at your mother and would say to themselves, oh, my God, that's the life I want. Uh -huh. 